In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the mid meshing tool. Mid meshing can be useful for parts uh, that might be a little bit more difficult to use the mid surface. So, for example, a lot of parts that include castings, machine parts, injection molded parts, things that have lots of thickness changes, uh, ribs, honeycomb structures, um, parts that typically are just very difficult to mid surface. And what mid meshing does is it automatically generates a mesh at the mid plane location uh, from the input uh, geometry without creating a mid surface. So I'm going to use this simple example and just walk through some of the options of creating editing and then finalizing your mid mesh so we're going to start in the mesh panel the mesh ribbon go to mid mesh always i recommend starting by showing the little video this will show you what the input is so for this it's pretty simple we input a element size that's how we start and then we start working with the editing of the mesh to make it a little bit uh, cleaner and uh, better mesh quality. If I go to the advanced options, you can see our inputs. Extraction size, um, and then some of these other ones. I highly recommend you going to the help, which can be directly accessed by hitting F1 when you're in any of these tools and going to the create mid mesh. Here you can see the different options for creating the mid mesh. I typically stick with the defaults and those work pretty well. So we need one input that we definitely need is the, um, the mesh size. So I usually just go ahead and grab the measure tool and start picking out some areas uh, that, I, that I know I want a certain number of elements um, in that direction. So, you know, flange width, flange length, maybe some of these minimum features here, just to get an idea of overall mesh size. Uh, and I can always adjust this after the fact as well when I rebuilt my mesh. Really, I just need to get a nice seed mesh that contains the right topology for, for this, this part. So I think two is a good place to start. Also, just for this, this demo, it's nice and easy. So the mid mesh tool works on the criteria file. Uh, criteria files and parameter files go hand in hand, and they get used in a lot of different tools. So it, it's good to know what they are, uh, how to use them. For this exercise, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but for the... I, the criteria editor, we need a target element size, so it's two. My rule of thumb is maximum is about double, so we'll use four, and then minimum is around 10% of maximum. For me, and this one, I'm gonna do 0.5. That's why I've got some nice even increments in my, in my model. That's all you really need to do. Everything else is gonna be based on ratios or angles, so those are element size independent. And then we can just go ahead and grab our input, which can either be a component or a solid directly, and go ahead and hit mid mesh. So our mesh is done here, and there's a couple things to note. So first off, uh, I mentioned that mid meshing tool generates a mesh directly from the solid input without use of mid surfaces. But in this case, you can see that there are surfaces now. And this is actually a new entity in HyperMesh. If you look in the, in the help, and if we go to FE Geometry, it's, it's topology on top of mesh. So CAD and mesh exist as a single entity. That way, uh, we have the ability to use all of our existing surface edit tools. And this is really useful for getting into this mid meshing workflow. So kind of the same as with um, mid surfacing is you might have some issues in the mesh. There, there's very little where you directly hit the button and everything comes out perfect, especially because this tool is used when parts are a little bit more complicated. 
So this one came out pretty good. Um, I induced some errors to go through some of our some of our workflow. And I'm going to be in this secondary ribbon. And I'm just going to go left to right. So the first one is this repair fill tool. And if we click on the link here, uh, it's just a really simple tool that goes and finds intersecting elements, um, missing elements within a face. So you can you can fix repair faces or you can fill faces. So we can simply go ahead and pick the find and it, it finds the patch and it zooms into it. And in here we can see that we've got an intersection. So for some reason, these elements got a little confused and the nodes overlapped each other. But I can really just go ahead and hit repair face and that's gonna fix that area. And again, I wanna note, and I'm gonna note this quite a bit, don't worry about element quality at this point. Worry about element topology. How closely does the do the elements and the nodes match the, the part that you want? Um, the next one is this create mid edge. Mid edges are what constitute or make up the edges of the topology. So Again, I'm gonna play this little video, give you an idea. So in this case, um, not just is it making a split, it's actually using the solid input as the, the guide. So in this case, we were missing this little corner section here. So I can just pick the two nodes, that's all I need. And then as an input, I'm gonna use uh, my guides. And I can just pick them one by one here, or I can go ahead and kind of link them by holding down A, and that gives me a by, by path, and say create. And if I turn that off, you can see that it's now made this nice edge. And I can go back to my repair fill, pick it, and you can see that it's seeding the additional loop where it needs to fill that face. And here we go. So again, it's filling it. We're just kind of building geometry at this point. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of skip ahead here. So we talked about create mid edge, um, this edit topology. This, this is mostly for if we wanna go ahead and delete some of these edges, uh, or if we want to create new edges but we can also use the geometry as well, the geometry tools. We can also imprint lines. Um, imprint can be very useful if, if there's um, something from the geometry that, that is missing in the, in the mesh itself. And at this point, I don't think we have anything. So I'll demonstrate that one a little bit later, but the other tool is align and inspect. So a line is going to align 1D uh, nodes, kind of project them to a common surface based on the, the, um, the, solid, the solid input, or it can align nodes along an edge. So let's go ahead and say nodes, and we will pick this node here. You can see this one's kind of falling outside of that aligned edge. So if I pick my node and my input is actually going to be this line and I don't need both guides. I can just use one guide. In this case, I do need both guides and say align. So it's projected it to that uh, where the rest of those elements and nodes are falling. So that's node. And then we can also do elements. And this would be more if you were to use uh, kind of a surface, an overall surface. And there, we've got that one projected to there. The other tool that can be useful for this is the inspect. The inspect works on the original geometry and the input mid mesh. And it's going to look for nodes off the middle um, edges off the solid edges, 
or nodes off of Solid Edge. So in this case, something very simple are uh, these are because of the density of these elements, they're off of what's called the, the Solid Edge, right? Because um, it's a fillet. Now, we may want that fillet or we may not want that fillet, um, but same up here. So we can click on them, and all it is is a click, and it will adjust each of these elements back to that original. And we can kind of go back and forth and find some. So this one um, is a little bit confusing because it's, it's, it's trying to determine between you know this this solid this solid transition between this thickness and this thickness so i would actually probably ignore this and leave that but this is where i can kind of go through and figure out each of these different ones here and some of these i might just ignore but i have the option of looking through each one like this one this one we want to project back so it's actually projected itself, but now it's off quite a bit. So we could also use this tool again and go using the guides. So overall, I think this looks pretty good now for the elements that we can fix. Um, and now the other thing I want to talk about are these these edges, these these free ed or these um, shared edges. So those are basically features that it's found from the solid you can see because of how thick the solid is it's it's tried to capture that if if for some reason you do want that but um i might not want that i actually want a pretty simple geometry um so i can go and actually use some of my standard geometry tools like stitch and i can go through and say well pretty simply I want to get rid of that one for sure. And you can see that I, I no longer have that, that line in there. So when I go back and rebuild this mesh, um, it, it'll, it'll ignore any of those new features. Um, and a lot of times what you may actually want to do is there may be quite a few of these shared edges, and I'd rather get rid of them all and then add my own features. So I could actually go ahead and grab them all, set my my uh, tolerance break angle to whatever I want, and hit OK. And now I actually only have free edges and and um, shared edges, or uh, the, the manifold edges. Now, what some of the tools I was talking about before is maybe I do want to keep some of those original ones. And that's where I can use this edit topology. And I can say, I want to actually keep this edge here and in print. And you can see it's grabbed that original edge there. And we can go ahead and uh, use our, our other tools as well, the, the split tool the interactive split. So we can kind of use a combination of, of all these tools, um, including the mid mesh one, mid mesh, uh, edit topology, this one, but I can also trim it. If I, for some reason, wanted to trim from here to here, it'll actually create its new, new line here. And maybe I break off these and, you know, sometimes I just like to square these all off knowing that I'll have a nice mesh after the fact. So that's a couple different ways I can make my own um, topology. Now, I keep saying uh, this isn't the final mesh. We're just trying to get the topology here. So how do we get the final mesh? Well, we can say rebuild. And a rebuild is based on that criteria file, but also the parameter file. And I'm not going to get too much into this parameter file. More, I'm going to just give you some ideas of what it does. Um, it, it, it fixes some of this, this geometry cleanup, some of these uh, small areas, sharpness, proximity. Uh, but we can also add or uh, remove holes or add washers to holes. 
And there's a lot of different options in here, and that's probably a, a future uh, future webinar that we'll do as well. But for now, let's just go ahead, pick all of our elements, and say rebuild. You can see right like that, uh, it, it did a pretty good job. Um, I've got all of my elements cleaned up. I've got pretty good mesh flow. Um, I could probably go in here and clean this up if I wanted to add more or a washer. But overall, this looks pretty good. So now the final option would probably be let's uh, let's quickly add some thickness to this. Um, so I could go in here and just get an idea of what 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 thicknesses I have. So four approximately for the the max, one for the minimum, and then some transition here. Uh, this rib has a bit of a transition from its thickest base at two and a half or. Um, or it's thinnest to back here, you know, two. So the tool that we have that works great with this mid mesh in conjunction with it is in the elements ribbon going to this map thickness. And again, I'm not going to go too much over this. I'm just going to give some options. So the out, the, um, the output can be property on elements, so direct assignment or indirect assignment, property on components. It'll actually create a new component and create a new property and assign it. We can give it a minimum thickness or just have it figure it out. Um, but I like to have um, of a fixed range. You know, I don't want, so it's, we can do offsets. Um, and we can do automatic or fixed interval. So in this case, I want a starting thickness of the minimum thickness. And I'm going to have a, um, a tolerance value. We'll just have this one. I don't want to have too many variations. And I can just go ahead, pick my source, which is going to be solid in this case. And my elements is my target and say apply thickness. And when it does this, you can see that I've got quite a few thicknesses and it goes from one to four with 0.2 being the breakdown. And I can undo that because that might be too many for what I want. And then I can adjust them and say, well, actually my thickness interval is just one. So in this case, I should have one, two, three, four, or just one and four if that's all I have. So in this case, now I've got my one, two, three, and four, and I've got um, four new components with each of their properties created and assigned. So that's my video on how to very quickly and efficiently mesh this part using the mid mesh tool.